Welcome back to our raw video where we are painting the Reaper miniature Blight Fang. We're making Blight, Fla Blight Fang a white dragon. Of course, we do very light editing on this, and we're going to be just doing some additional on the Frost Giant White from where we left off last week. We had started doing some of the scale work. And I had mentioned that I was going to do some of the scales off camera, but I have not had a chance to do that, and I'm still considering whether or not I want to do that. But I've got my wet palette working here. Let's oh, make sure it's nice and thin. Good consistency. We don't want it too thick because we want some of the colors below here to show through. And just working on some scales. There's so many scales. I don't think we're going to only do scales, but just to touch up a little bit from where we left off. Of course, if you're catching this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We definitely appreciate it. We're looking to hit our milestone growth. When we get 25 subscribers to our channel, we're going to give away five t-shirts. I look forward to getting that milestone complete and on the next way. Get in here a little bit. And if you like some of the videos that we're doing, make sure you hit that bell to watch when we're putting up new videos. And give us a thumbs up. If you're just tuning in, we have been painting this dragon since we just had it prepped and ready so we started with just a gray mini after it had been cleaned now i did not do all of the ceiling along the wings that i wanted to but i'm using this for my own tabletop and just working on getting it painted and ready to go and of course, this miniature here is, as I said, going to be a white dragon. I'm going to use it at my own tabletop and on my own displays. After we started with the gray, we put a complete base coat on it of this frost giant white. And this white was actually a sample that I received from Reaper. So uh, sample colors, when they send them out, they're either test colors or it did not match the correct hue um, so it actually doesn't have a name but it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it so I just call it frost giant white um, but a pretty good white after that I did a wash of blues and now I'm just going back through and putting that base color back on and oh these scales Let's, uh, I think we're going to change it up a little bit. Connect some of these. They get so small in here as you get into the forearm and then into the hands. It's kind of hard to tell where some of the scales are. There's a little bit of misshape on this arm or leg, the foreleg, forearm. It gets a little dicey here that's okay then after we complete this coat over the whole miniature then we're going to blend this with pure white that'll be a mid-tone and then we'll use pure white for the very edging and the little bits of highlighting on the scale ridges that'll give us a nice pure white edging on the dragon. There's so many scales on this bad boy. And I still have a lot to do on the mouth as well, but we're going to work on the wings a little bit here. And I've, yeah, let's thin that down. It's a little thicker than I wanted. I want these to be fairly translucent. So that some of that color 
is going to come through and more so when it dries you can see here it looks pretty heavy in that color you're not seeing as much carry through especially the magenta that we lay down first as this dries you'll see a little bit just a little bit of that hue of purple come through but we want to have this coated up with this white nice and thin down and that'll give us good tone representation yeah it's not showing through as much because it's wet but when it dries you'll be able to see a little bit more of the other colors coming through and just starting with edging and putting in some lines here and as those dry that'll be more opaque as we cover the wing completely so it'll give some additional character where there aren't like striation lines or wrinkles or anything sculpted in and by pulling the brush this way, the majority of the paint is going to flow to where we end our brush stroke. So putting it on and then pulling it up, we're going to have more paint towards the center. Which for this one here, we'll actually reverse it on the next coat where we'll blend in some colors after the wing is completely coated this way. But, I don't know, I'm probably going to speed it up here. This will be my marker if we do some editing. Go along the ridge here. And just put in some of those good lines. Uh, fill in a little bit. Well, this wing is so massive. The miniature as a whole is pretty massive. But I'm pretty stoked. These dragons are pretty awesome. I love painting dragons. In April, I'm going to be receiving a few more. You'll see it when we do our unboxing video. And make sure you tune in for that. Just looking at getting these connected here. And rinse the brush a little bit before pop some striation lines in here. And I'm going to let these go through and dry so that as we coat completely, it's got a little more opaque and there are a couple of lines sculpted in here just going to ridge those out and start to work on oh, I'm getting some tearing in there and yeah I should have used a bigger brush here Let's edge out. See if we can lay down enough to pull it in. Our weather here is still pretty dry, so because we're using this thin coat, it's going to dry nice and fast. And hopefully that keeps us from breaking the paint that we lay down. Not a whole ton, though. Those earlier layers are still a little wet, a little breaking. Tone, we're starting to see the change from that blue wash. Pull it to the center. Ultimately, what we want to do is have the upper and lower edges where it's almost like thicker skin will have it be a little more opaque in color 
but you know those lines are just being a little challenging. Give a good rinse here. And let's move up to the next one. This one, those lines are a little wet, so we'll keep pulling some of that paint nice and thin. Edging this way is going to make sure that we have our most opaque color to the edges. Feather it nice and gently out. Of course, because it's a thinner wash, that actually is pulling pretty decent. A little challenging angle here. And boy, even thin down it still has a lot of coverage. But it will dry more transparent. A lot of the opaqueness is just because of the wet. It's reflecting a lot. And feather some of this. Now as we paint this in, this will start covering up some of those earlier lines that we popped in. And again, just feather this nice and gently. We want to have as good a transitions as we can get. Nice and smooth. Really watching our edges. Near these joint areas, the uh, skin on the wing is going to be a little uh, like thicker, so more opaque, and feathering towards the center. And lay down a little bit more. These wings, now I've only painted a few dragons, but I find the wings to be pretty challenging. Um, I think partly because the areas are so big, but also because as you think about skin, do you focus on things like veins or light shining through some of the thin areas? And this process will give us some of that kind of light shining through. Because as we paint in this technique, edging and feathering, the edges will be more opaque. So it's actually going to be more of the blue showing through in the center, that blue wash. And more of the white on the edges which sounds kind of funky, but for this dragon, I think it'll work pretty well. We will see, worst case scenario, I might have to redo the wings, but what a difference. When you're already seeing pretty good transitions in colors compared to what it was. And let's Change it up a bit. There we go. So as we're painting this dragon here, I always try to be thinking about what the environments are, what the colors are, kind of what's the situation that has this guy going. And in the biggest pieces are Arctic, cold, snow and ice. So really thinking about like snow and ice, where is it the whitest to kind of the blue grays. If you ever see snow banks or footsteps in snow, it gets almost this grayish blue shading to it. So that's kind of what I'm wanting to emulate within these wings is that kind of bluish gray shadowing color. 
instead of having it be on the thickest parts, I'm going to put it in the lightest parts. So kind of a reversal. And, and just edging here, making sure that the brush has plenty in the belly so as we feather it out. It's nice and soft and a little challenging. Um, a little bit better viewer here for the camera. And the light's a little bit off. I know the focus when my hand gets too far in there throws it off the dragon. But if you're watching this, leave a comment below on your thoughts on white dragons. Uh, Arctic creatures, the most bestial of dragons. Let me know your thoughts on the colors that I've chosen so far and kind of how I'm playing this feathering and, and light and kind of musculature. Um, give me your thoughts and comments as we continue moving on these wings. Massive wings. Actually kind of glad that this sample was a um, kind of perfect color for what I needed at the time. It's uh, always serendipitous when you receive just what you need as you're starting a mini. The wings here starting to get a little bit more clear to them. Uh, this one here, the blue sat on this pretty heavy from the wash. So these upper wings, the outer edges, probably take, I'm thinking maybe three more coats. Because here where they connect, I want to blend a little bit of that magenta with the frost white at some point so we get kind of that more organic color. Some of the violets that we put in here um, from that magenta, I think you can see them okay, but not as well as I'd like. Uh, and this one actually has some good detail carved into it. I don't know if you can see the kind of wrinkled lines in here, but it's pretty good. Let's just edge those really well. And these two panels here are probably the best sculpted pieces. It's pretty nice. Uh, and just like on the other one, we want to pop in some areas where it's going to be more opaque. And hit along the edges. Of course, I haven't hit those wing bone parts yet. I want to work on the wings first because that's going to play into the edging that we do on the um, I guess bones, dragon wings, the arm and fingers in the wings, all the structure. I just want to focus on the flesh for this video. So just the fleshy bits. And let's see if we can get this leading up. So overall, I've been working on a couple of ideas for dragons for some of the ones that I've been 
coming in. Of course, this white dragon I've wanted to paint for quite a while. So I've got lots of ideas as we get into the final layers for the coloring. I'm going to have these wings be a little more modeled, you'll see, as we get further into it. But this here, we're just laying down. Again, this is just going to be like structure points as we layer up more. These are going to be more opaque. So it'll give the illusion of the uh, like wrinkles or thicker areas in the wings. And get this leading edge. Again, just edging it out. I hate pouring like that. Let's feather. And nice. Again, this looks pretty opaque already, but as it dries, you'll see it'll get more uh, translucent. So some of those other colors will flow through. And let's see, where are we going to work on next? These ones are nice and dry. You can just edge this out. And feather into the center. We want this to be nice and light. You'll see those uh, like striations be more opaque through. And the layering is going to be nice and thin as it gets more and more to the center. As this dries, it'll blend as we continue to build up the layers. And again, just edge this bad boy out, feather it in. The last dragon I did, I think I did a total of eight layers on the wings. So it'll be really interesting to see how many layers this one takes. Let's uh, check and see what this one's going to do. This section here is looking really good. Keep edging and feathering out. Of course, as this dries, it'll be a little bit more transparent, but you can start to see how those connect in. And let's edge in there. And this leading edge here and it's hard to see when it's wet but some of that blue will still colorize the white as we work it towards the center so it'll have lots of good sheen to it and make those lines that we put in almost connect. And with these constant layering pieces, we're able to get really good tone and add dimension, a little more focused so the eyes can see it a little bit better to match up with the sculpt. But just thin white coats. And 
and just applying it nice and evenly. Of course, there will be several layers that we'll do on these wings, especially. But it's a lot of big area to cover. Now these lines here are all dry, so we can start applying on this wing. Yeah, and the other dragons I've done, the wings are definitely the most challenging for me. Just because, one, the area is so large. And I want them to really connect with the dragon. And sometimes it's hard because these fleshy bits here are in stark contrast with the scaly body. So it's two different textures that you've got to be thinking of. And of course the connecting point is the color. That's what makes it feel like one figure. Edge these out. And feather. And having these two different textures be on the same thing would be like having a shell on a person. So maybe you have to think of them almost like a turtle. And variances and similarities in the texture of the skin versus the shell. Even though there are a lot of color similarities the actual textures themselves are pretty different. But then of course that's a real creature and these are all fantasy. And with my wet palette, even with these thin paints, it keeps them nice and moist. If I were doing this on just a regular palette, these paints would be dried out long ago just because of the temperature. Even though it's not like scorching hot here, it's pretty warm. And really just watching to see you know, with a smaller brush, these bigger panels are harder to do, but it's coming along pretty decent. And let's go after the face a little bit here. I want to start making this be a little more in tune with the body. And just working on some of the higher areas. Again, this will get uh, several different coats and layers on, but we want to start re-adding our base color onto our blue wash just so we can start highlighting some of the areas that will be more out of the shadowy blue color. And really show some of the detail. The sculpt on this face is actually really beautiful. It's got a lot of character to it, so we want to highlight that out and really make it look holistic and detail out the sculpt and push some of those shadows in deeper so that as we start to highlight out after we complete more of the scaling and the wings we're working with the same color 
all the time because we want that consistency through. So really focusing on here and tying it into the neck with picking out the high points and around the ridges around the eye and it's kind of challenging. I'm going to change up my stance here a little bit and try to paint it as it's sitting. Hold my hand for a little steady. Got a little bit of shakes tonight, so just hold my hand in place. Work on these high points to start bringing in the highlights, pushing the shadows further in. And I think I'm going to call this good for right now. Just see if my hands don't get steady. So we'll probably end this here as I finish emptying my brush and do it some more next week. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to help us grow. And here's another video that we feel you might enjoy. Until next time. Help us answer the question of where will your adventures take you?